Hey guys, what's up? So, I thought I'd show you my little 12 volt to 5 volt uh, USB converter. Uh, it's a little power buck. I guess that's what they call it online, a power buck. And I already have kicked in some leads already off my uh, power supply over there. I'll show you that in a second. But the whole point of this project is to fire up a uh, Raspberry Pi and uh, use my 3D printer power supply. So let me show you this real quick. So this thing was like a two pack. It was like a eight dollars on Amazon. I'll put a link where you can get it. So my power supply is putting out. This is and we'll show you. I'll fire up my uh, a Raspberry Pi here. Put a Raspberry Pi one in there. So you can see it. Now oh, it's a uh, power. And I'll tell you in a couple seconds the problems I was having with my existing setup here. Alright. So. The deal with the, uh, the well, the, the Raspberry Pi, uh, Pi 1 and Raspberry uh, 2, these are both Model B. I think one's a, this one's a B plus, so I think this is a Model B. Uh, it says it right there. Raspberry 2 Model B. So that's a B. So these actually use less amperage. They draw less amperage than the uh, Raspberry Pi 3. And so um, originally when I set this up, I'll show you this, um, on my uh, power supply, right there, uh, you know, my 3D printer power supply for my heavily modified Anet printer, it, uh, it worked fine for the uh, Raspberry Pi Raspberry 2 but uh, once I upgraded the Raspberry Pi 3 this thing required more amperage I guess there's more chips Wi-Fi chip whatever you know so um, had to upgrade it so uh, that's what I got here I'm gonna take this old USB converter which is about puts out about 1.2 amp to this one uh, that can do up to 3.5 amp so I've already actually tested it with the uh, the Raspberry Pi 3. I already have the Raspberry Pi 3 mounted to the printer in a case. But, uh, yeah, I just want to keep this easily. I, I, I want to build this pick this printer up and only have one wire connected, the power cable. And that's it. So I can take this move anywhere in my garage and print to it via OccuPrint, via my Wi Fi. So, alright, so I'm going to take this power supply off and I'll take the old uh, USB, I guess I called a buck. So. All right, so that's my uh, existing box right there. It's just screwed on the uh, the front of it here, and uh, under these caps, uh, that's how the wire gets in there. So, I uh, am gonna take this off and uh, get to there. All right, so I don't know if you can see that in the light, but I, I just have two power wires fed in my power supply, and they feed that buck right there. All right. All right, so now I can give you a little closer look at the cases. So this actually was the same case. Um, I had actually had to expand this case to get that power thing in there. I, I don't, like I said, I don't know if they call it a buck or what the converter. Like on the website, it said it was called a USB buck. But on this one, I had to stretch it because this thing was actually longer. So that's why it kind of looks like it's sort of the dimensions are not correct. I'm just going to put that on like a... I'm, I'm going to hot glue it in. So... And then I'm going to use this 24 gauge wire here. I'm going to drill a hole to the back of it. Bring the wires up. And that's it. So it's got a side of the wires. There's a, there's a positive or negative and a positive on, on the back of it here. Pretty basic. Solder it and get it going. All right, got the thing in there. That's it. So this actually is such a tight fit. This fits so good in this one that I don't think I'm going to even use a. Uh, what's it called? Uh, hot glue. Probably line this one a little bit, maybe. Yeah, it's a little... Probably could have made this case about a millimeter bigger this way. Alright, I'll get some screws on there. Alright, so now I just gotta tin these leads. I never usually just have bare copper wire there. So I'll use my solder. Some solder in there so that they don't unravel. Stay nice and clean. I 
Okay, that's it. And that's what it looks like. Uh, case is back together. Cool. Like I said, it's di dimensionally it's different than the other one just because the d device was different. So, as you can see. Alright. Just gotta fish these back through now. Alright. I can find the hole. You get some better light here though. Alright. There. Let's gotta screw this case on. Kind of where it was before. I have to drill some new holes. Looks like they're going to have to. Well, this will be a very close fit if it's not. So let me get that thing screwed on permanently. Actually, I made this one ahead. What did I make? A PETG and this one was PLA. Uh, the color is different. Alright. Alright, there's the new USB converter and there's a wire that feeds down into the back of that Raspberry Pi right there. And See, so yeah, I haven't powered it on yet, so we'll see what happens. Alright, so I'm getting a blue light in there, so I'm getting power in there. But the key here is that uh, my Raspberry Pi will get enough average to fire this thing up. There it goes, okay, good. So I know when I can see the network lights, that means it's booted up. So, well, at least the, uh, it's getting enough power to activate the network. So, like when it doesn't get enough amperage, it just gets a uh, red light here. So cool, yeah, kind of sucked out to do all that just for the Raspberry Pi 3, you know. Uh, but I wanted that wireless function, so I can just really, I can just, I, I'm gonna be able to just, wherever this, uh, I just need power and that's it, you know, run an extension cord to the printer, I can print anywhere in my garage wirelessly. So, one cord and that's it. Alright, cool.